Tutorial 4. Water Flow Design Module. The module pipe sizing is a coded MS Excel spreadsheet, providing quicker free pipe sizing. It applies to design of any piping system circulating uncompressible fluids. This tool helps to size piping networks with heating hot water, chilled water, domestic cold water, or gasol. Usually, engineers use a chart to size piping. The process is simple. But, it is simple for a single pipe section without fittings, valves, coils, and other equipment. When it comes to sizing of a network with many sections and complicated fittings, the work becomes extremely cumbersome and error-prone. The need and distribution of thermal loads among the piping sections adds an additional level of complexity to the process. The module automatically performs all the works, allowing to quickly size piping systems of any complexity. Prior to pipe sizing, the piping network layout, shown for the sample building by blue and signed lines, has to be developed, and the heating loads of the baseboards and reheat coils calculated, as it was discussed in tutorial 2. The space comfort for assembling room 101 is provided by the air supply duct with six diffusers, reheat coil RHC4, and the baseboards located under the windows. The blue lines of piping distribute hot water to the baseboard, and the lines shown in sign color represent the piping serving the reheat coil. The sizing process includes several sequent steps. Distribution of thermal loads amongst piping sections, calculation of fluid flow rates for each pipe section, and selection of pipe sizes based on certain criteria. The last step is accompanied by calculation of the pipe pressure loss. The Averill piping system pressure loss is required for sizing the pumps designed to circulate the hot water through the system. The worksheet low calculator performs the first step of sizing. It distributes thermal loads among piping sections. The distribution depends on the concept of water return back to the boiler. You can see the difference between the concepts on the diagrams shown at the top of the worksheet. The reverse return arrangement provides the return water flow after leaving the heating equipment moves in the direction of supply water flow. The direct return arrangement makes the return and supply water flows to move in the opposite directions. The sizing process will demonstrate it on the piping serving the reheat coils only. Pumps P1 and P3 supply hot water to the reheat coil pipe branch shown in sign color. The water flow direction is marked at the branch T's by point 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Accordingly, the water is supplied to the reheat coils in the following sequence, RHC1, 9, 7, and so on. The last coil receiving the water is RHC4 serving the assembling room. The branch has reverse water return concept. The water supply pipe on this drawing is shown by acronym HWS and the return pipe by HWR. The supply water moves from point 4 to point 3. At point 3, a part of water diverts to the reheat coil RHC5. After the coil, the water with reduced temperature enters the common return pipe but continues to move in the same direction from point 3 to point 2. Now, let us return to the worksheet low calculator. The design heating loads of the reheat coils have been calculated by the module design loads as described in the tutorial too. Here is the report. Input the reheat coil names into the worksheet by linking to the report of the module design loads. Similarly, input the reheat coil heating loads from the same report. Name the branch with reheat coils as reheat coil branch. Specify the return water concept as R, reverse. 
In column H, sequence the terminal equipment tags in the direction of the supply water flow. The first coil receiving supply water was RHC1. The coil tag from column B is 1. Input this tag first. The second coil was RHC9. Input its tag 9 next. Repeat this procedure until all coils are specified. The worksheet automatically calculates the thermal loads for the supply, return, and branch off pipes of each coil section. Once you input a coil tag in column H, the checkbox column changes its color to orange. This feature is convenient for visual control of the entering process. If you change the water return arrangement from R to D, which stands for direct, the worksheet recalculates the load distribution accordingly. To perform the pipe sizing, click the tap pipe sizing. First, select the fluid type and average working temperature. The boiler plant in sample building provides hot water with temperature of 180 degrees. The selection will determine the fluid properties shown in the cells below. Then, input design water temperature differential. Usually, it is 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Later, the code will use the differential to calculate the water flow rate. During the next two steps, we will be busy entering the pipe section names and associated loads in these two columns. Let us start with the supply pipe sections of the branch. Paste and copy, or link the section names from the worksheet low calculator. In a similar way input the associated thermal loads. Once you enter a section thermal load value, the next column calculates water flow rate through the section. Further works are performed for each section individually. Input the section lengths measured from the drawing. Select Pipe Material from drop-down menu. Select Pipe Schedule from drop-down menu. The schedule determines pipe thickness. At the next step, select an initial section diameter. Once you enter a section diameter, the worksheet immediately calculates the fluid velocity and friction loss rate related to the section in these two columns. Check if the parameters meet acceptable range. For fluid velocity, typical range is 4 to 8 feet per second. For friction loss, typical range is 2 to 4 inches of water column per 100 feet of section length. Change the initial diameter if the requirements are not met. For example, the initial diameter for the section supplying water to coil RHC1 is 3 quarter of inch. At this size, the velocity and friction are higher than required. Increase the size until the velocity and friction values fall within the required ranges. The next step is to input loss coefficients of elbows, valves, T's, and other fittings that might belong to the section. The supply section has a T diverting some flow to the coil. Type the fitting name for your records. Input the loss coefficient associated with the T. 
Other loss coefficients can found in our guide A to ZHVAC design for engineers. Perform the same procedure for the other sections. Read the friction, fitting, and total losses calculated by the worksheet for each section. The worksheet also calculates the water volume in the sections. This information will be useful for sizing the expansion tank of the piping system. Name the loop in the designated cell, and calculate the total pressure loss, as the sum of the section pressure losses. You will need this information for sizing pump for the piping loop. At earlier steps of work with this module, we have linked the cells simulating the heating loads in the module design loads with the worksheet load calculator. If any changes to the load calculation are required, the linkage will transfer the new load values automatically. You do not need to do the transfer and the majority of other steps again. Click on the report tab to view and print the final calculations. The benefits of the module are obvious. As opposed to existing software tools or charts sizing single pipes, the module allows to calculate a piping network of any configuration and design concept. Linked with other Excel-based spreadsheets, the module gives you the option of quick and unlimited additions of the initial calculations. The accuracy of the calculations has been validated higher and sufficient for commercial engineering. User-friendly interface and other standard Excel features made PIP of sizing work pleasant and easy.